Praise is what I do, saints. It's Sister with a Testimony. And today our topic is spiritual warfare. Where is the battlefield? The battlefield is in your mind. The battlefield is in my mind. If we keep our minds on the Lord, there won't have to be a battlefield. Praise is what I do, saints. Let's discover how to eradicate the strongholds in our mind so that it is no longer the battlefield. First of all, the mindsets, the patterns, the processes that cause us to act or think in a certain way are ingrained in us, our behaviors. Whatever governs our behaviors would be considered a stronghold and they can be good or bad. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5, For we know that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God, bringing every thought captive into the obedience of Christ Jesus, having in us a readiness to revenge our disobedience until our obedience is fulfilled. That's a, that's a lot, but that's what I keep my mind stayed on because I know the difference between the flesh and the spirit. And it takes time to understand. It takes time to memorize. It takes time to hide the word in your heart that you would not sin against the Lord. Saints, the battlefield is in the mind. And we have to overtake and overcome the mind with good thoughts. Otherwise, we're always going to be thinking stinking. No, I didn't make that up. Stinking thinking is a part of life. We have to learn to stop the stench in Jesus' name. Strongholds of the mind can be demonic and satanic. According to Ephesians 6.12, we know that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. These demonic strongholds in your mind can be territorial. These sorts of spirits occupy families, communities, organizations, churches, governments, nations, all the way from the cradle to the grave in all areas of this world in all nations, peoples, tribes, and languages. These strongholds in our mind, saints, can be ideological. ideological. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the glorious light of the gospel would shine unto them. Yeah, so that they could believe. They've been blinded, but God has allowed the blindness because of our sin. Our sin has separated us from the Lord. And these ideological strongholds in our minds influence not only us, but culture and society. These strongholds can also be personal saints in Romans chapter 1 verse 28. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a reprobate, debased mind to do what they ought not to be doing. This personal ideological influence can be personal sin, familial sin in your family line, of course, generational, organizational, made up of thoughts, feelings, attitudes, and behaviors. In other words, how we act and react, the enemy knows and he uses it against us. The good thing is, is that there can be divine strongholds, saints. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 2, set your mind on things above, not on things on earth. The fact remains that we are to be sober-minded and watchful because our adversary, the devil, roams around seeking whom he may devour. Uh, that's in 1 Peter 5, 8, again. The divine strongholds is what we want. And then there are military strongholds, militaristic, which are good, godly militaristic strongholds, because we are soldiers after all is said and done. No good soldier entangles himself with the affairs of this world, saints. 
the militaristic godly strongholds are put up by the army of the Lord to protect we soldiers from enemy fire who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. 1 Peter 1 5. Yay! I'll take that one. So we see that we have strongholds in the mind, and that's where the battlefield is. And we have to pull the strongholds down according to the Word of God. And how do we do that? By casting down vain imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. Every impression that comes in your mind is not from the Lord. It could be from you. It could be from the any enemy, of course, and from other people. All vain thoughts that do not line up with the Lord's word have to be examined and cast down. Saints, you have to, again, bring your thoughts into captivity. We have to know the word of God. If you know the word of God in order to know your enemy's tactics, you're going to know what's right and what's wrong, and you're going to know what's from the Lord and what is from Hasatan, Satan, that old serpent the devil our adversary what thought do i keep what thought do i bring into captivity a lot of times i'll use this simple exercise and i'll say it out loud did jesus christ of nazareth come as god in the flesh if you immediately forget what you were contemplating and thinking on that thought was not from the lord if you can't get rid of it that's the lord because if you're living holy and righteous you have to train your mind to cast down those vain imaginations and you will learn what is good know the word philippians 4 thank 4 8 think on these whatsoever is right whatsoever is good whatsoever is holy whatsoever is pure if you quote the scripture it says that we're to think on things that are just and righteous and holy and justifiable, pure, lovely. The exact words, saints, all mean that if it's good and it's holy and it's righteous and it's pure and it's lovely, that we're to think on those thoughts. We're to think on things that are above. So if things are above, they're not going to be bad thoughts. They're not going to be thoughts of getting even and revenge and non-forgiveness you're either going to cast the vain imaginations down you're going to overcome the strongholds through the word of god through thinking on things that are pure and lovely and of good virtue and a good report those are the things that you're supposed to be dwelling on so according to the word of god we've been given what we're to be thinking on Thou will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. So if you have peace, then you know that's God. If you don't have peace, there's your clue, saints. The mind must be renewed. According to Romans 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, saints, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be not conformed to the world. That means... If you're living in the world, that's one thing. But if you're living of the world and a part of the world, that's not going to work. John 8, 32. Jesus told his disciples, if you're my disciples, you will remain in the word and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Saints, you have to remain in the word. That's the key. That's the clue. In Acts chapter 11, verse 18. When they heard this, they became silent and they praised God. They said, so then God has granted also to the non-Jews that they change their minds, they repent. That's what this is about, saints. We have to change our minds about sin. We have to change our minds about transgressing God's law that means breaking his laws he did not do away with the laws he fulfilled the laws 
Jesus Christ of Nazareth is God in the flesh. He is the law, saints. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Not only is he the law, he's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. He was alive. He died, and he's alive forevermore. By his blood, we have been purchased. And our righteousness is in Christ, because our righteousness is as of filthy rags. If you have a filthy mind... Clean it up with the washing of the water of the word. The battlefield is in your mind, saints. It's in your mind. Clear your mind. Take the eraser. Wipe off all of the chalk off the chalkboard and let's start fresh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things that were made were made by Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. Seriously, He made you, He made your mind, and you have to make up your mind to change it about sin. The battlefield is in your mind. It's always going to be there. Learn to recognize when Satan is impressing a thought upon you and when it's your own carnal, fleshly desires and when it's the Lord. The Lord will never lead you into temptation. The Lord will never tempt you. He will test you, but he will never tempt you. Learn the word of God, saints. Keep your mind stayed on the Lord, on things above, and you will have conquered the battlefield of your mind. If you're having problems, if the strongholds in your mind cannot be overcome on your own, find a good prayer partner. Someone that can pray with you and not air your dirty laundry. Find a trusted pastor. Find a trusted leader that is a feeder and point you to Jesus. I praise the Lord today. Praise is what I do. It's sister with a testimony. This is spiritual warfare. The battlefield is your mind and you can overcome by the blood of the lamb, the words of your testimony and not loving your life unto death. It's sister with a testimony. God bless you. The next video is going to be about spiritual warfare and what our weapons are.